Begin the current daf, Mesechtis Babakama Dav Tzadi Zayin. We begin on the top line of the Amid, where we continue the discussion of the previous daf. We had mentioned our previous Mishnah, a case of stealing an animal, and it got older, and the slave got older. The Tavikama holds, both the Mamasham Kshaz Exela, because your Kaina, as we said with Shinoi, as we hadn't said in the beginning of our parak. We may have differentiated between Avadim and Behema. By Avadim, he said, Harisha Cholofanecha. Why could you say Because Avadim is Kamakarka Dami, and Karka is in Nixella. So you didn't steal anything. It's, it's, it's what it was. So I'm just going to give you back what was always yours. Now, Rav Paskin Halocha Lamaisa, like Rameir, and the Gemara asked on that and says, hey, what, well, you're going to pass like Rameir, not Grabon? They said, no. He has it uh, the opposite version of how we have it in our Mishnah. And therefore, it's really the Rabbanu who is saying that Avodim, you can say Rishel Chalvanecha, because the Ebed is like Karka, which again, it's not an Exalus, so there because it's just a Rishel Chalvanecha. And that the Gemara is going to ask right now and say, really, does Rab really hold the Ebed is Karka? And the Gemara proceeds to ask on that opinion. Some discussed in today's daf are Hatekiv Ba'abdushel Chaveiroi. If someone grabs a hold of his friend's slave and he does work with him, he's potter from compensating the owner of that slave. Uh, another similar case, if someone grabs his friend's boat and he does work with it, what's the halacha over there? The Gemara is going to differentiate if you have to pay for that uh, service of that boat or not. Uh, the next Mishnah continues with Gazamat Bey of Anistic, meaning uh, what we said in our Mishnah. Uh, further, we said that if someone steals a coin and it cracks, so that we said, Misham Gishas Exela, and the Gemara is going to discuss exactly what's considered included in the category of Nistic. Some important terms of concept in today's daf are Shina HaNikarhu. If it's a recognizable change like Nistak, then Kanye Bashina, then you acquire with a Shinik. Uh, but let's say Gazamad Bey of Anistic, let's say steal a coin and became uh, disqualified, but it, nothing happened to the actual coin, then I'm like, I'm like, I'm say, here, you take back your coin, although it cannot be used anymore. Um, which that relates to the concept of Shin Shin and Nikahu, but kind of machinery, because it's not recognizable the change in it, and I never acquired it. So though you can't use it anymore now, but I didn't, I never, I never got it. I never, I never took it. It's always been yours. Um, if someone lends his friend uh, on a coin, meaning that he, they, there's a certain merchandise that he lends him, but he sets aside a certain amount of money for that loan, and then benefs la and then the coin becomes invalidated. What's the halacha? Uh, the Gemara has a, a discussion regarding that. And another term that comes into today's stuff is kesef tzura. When you when you're deconsecrating meister sheni, has to be on a coin that has a form, has a, a, a minted coin, and and not just on uh, on anything else. So we begin the current daf. The first word on that tzadik zayinam and alav that um, we had mentioned that Rab holds. That Ebed is Kimakarka dummy, and therefore the halachas of Gzela don't apply, and therefore you can say Rishakal Fanecha. And that the Gemara asks, Umiyomarab, does Rab really say Abdi Kimakar Koi dummy that a slave is like 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 land? Daniel Barav Katina Amar Rav. Rav was quoted as saying the following halacha. Hataikiv ba Abdi Shalchaber. Someone grabs his friend's slave, so he seizes him and he he does work with him. Makes him puts him to work. Potter is exempt from paying the owner the wages of the work that he used from his slave. Now, says the Gemara like this, if you're going to think to say that that a slave is like a piece of land, am I Potter? Why is he exempt? He's in the possession of the owner. So, if he's like Karka, then even if he's trying to steal him, he doesn't leave his owner's domain. You're doing work with his slave, which is like karka that can, cannot be stolen. Right, but I'm saying, but that's so then that he should be chayiv because the evidence was in the owner's possession when he performed the work. He's using the owner's slave. Meaning, if you hold Abdi Kimikan Talpa Dom, you could say that, okay, so then you, you stole him, and then you put him because the Abdi was in your possession when you performed the work because it was stolen. But, but you can't steal Karka. So if you can't steal Karka, so then you should be Chayev and pay whatever the value is of usually of such a slave, like we're going to see with the boat later on, that um, you've so got to. No, no, I'm saying it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. Point is, it's the owner's slave. 
if it's the use, if it's yours now, you don't have to pay for whatever work you did with it. I'll give him back the slave that I stole from him. But by karka, if you can't steal it, so then it's his slave. You should have to pay him for whatever his slave is worth for the work that you. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. But the, but the main point is, is that it would sound only correct if it ever was like metal, not like karka. Says Gemara, what are we talking about over here? Is Shaloi Bishas Malacha. We're talking about that he made him do work at a time when he usually doesn't work. Or right now, the owner doesn't have any work for him to do. Which this is your case of Zenene Vizele Chaser, where this neighbor is getting pleasure and the owner of this slave is not losing anything, and that's why he's going to be Potter. He, even though the Ebed is like Karka, yeah, right, he's not stolen, and therefore you should generally have to pay for the work that you're using with him, where he's usually a worker, but he, he doesn't usually work at this time. He had the Shalach Le Rababa, a Rababa sent Lamori Bar Mar. He says, Boy, my name is Rabuna. I asked Rabuna the following question Hadar Bechatzer Chavere Shlimidaitim. Someone lives in his friend's courtyard without his awareness. A guy has a summer home at Tom's River. A guy comes there and he makes a party there. The guy doesn't even know. Which the Gemara in the second parak said, we're talking about a courtyard, what's called Loikaim al Agra. The guy doesn't usually rent it out. The guy's not, the guy doesn't charge. He's not, not that type of guy. So the question was, do I have to pay him now that I had like a party there? Or does he not have to pay him? Shokhle sent him, in the doesn't have to pay him. Because this was called Zenen the Bazil Chaser. You're having pleasure. This guy's not losing. This guy is, wouldn't rent it out anyway. So uh, the fact that they saw cars out there and no one called up, you know, the, the, uh, the, the middle guy to get, say, Can I, is this guy's house available? Because doesn't rent it out. So doesn't have to pay him. Oh, so that's the case we're talking about over here where I take of the Abdushul Chaveroi is also Zenen the Bazil Chaser because it's at a time that the guy wouldn't be working anyway. And there, that's why you're going to be Potter. What? Well, right, but he's not a baldover. Because the owner is the one who owns him. He's a, he's a piece of property. You don't ask the ground if the, if the ground is, uh, and you're having the party and you're stepping on the ground if, if he's having it's chasen. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, wait a second. How could you compare the case of the slave to the guy's house, the guy's summer house that you guys, you know, used? Bishlam Hassan, we understand the guy's summer home. Bain Lamandam, our weather according to the one. Which we discussed this, uh, these two different lashonos on the Chafalov. Beis miyas beyasiv. When someone's living in someone's house, he's doing benefit for this house that there's people living in over there because it doesn't get destroyed. Because if someone lives inside a house, he takes care of it. I'm not talking about people come and crash a house and smash it up. He's, he comes in and he's, he's you know he's fixing it up. Nichale, it makes sense. And bein lamadam a weather according to the one that quotes the pasuk Yeshayo Shia Yuchashar. Is a is a shindalid, is a demon that its name is Shia, and it, it, it breaks the gates and the walls of a house that if a person's not living over there, that's a passing in Shia. So Nikhale, again, it's he's pleased the owner that someone's over there. So and that's a zeloi chaser that this guy is being nana that okay you wouldn't have to pay anything. but over here, mean Nikhale to Nikhashavde. You think he's happy that his slave is being weakened? He gives him a happy hour. He gives him a. A, a, a break, whatever, and you're taking him and you say, hey, go ahead, go, go bring these boxes up seven flights for me. Well, he, he, uh, why, why don't you have to pay that, 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 it's, it's, it's in that type of situation? I mean, they said, no, it's not true. Hachanami Nichale, here also, he's actually pleased, the owner of the slave, that his slave should not learn the ways of being uh, lazy and being idle and not doing anything. So he's actually happy that you're putting him to work not to get used to this, like sitting back and enjoying himself. Now, Ibrahim brings a story related to this halacha. Where of Yisab uh, in the household of Yisab Bachama, have a talk of Avdi de Inchi. They used to seize the slaves of people, the Masik Buhuzuzi. People owed them money. And people weren't paying. So they, t- they took matters into their own hands. They would grab the help, the cleaning help. The, la- the, 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 the clean ladies, whatever, the, the slaves of the people that owe the money. And they did work with them. So you're not going to pay us. We'll do work with your servants. So Omele and the Gears says, Rava Beret. So the, 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 his son Rava said to him, My time Abed Mahachi, why does the master do this? Meaning, Ta, why are you doing this? Omele says, What's the problem? Nachman said, Abdu a slave, 
the bread of his belly is not even worth. Meaning it's not even worth the amount that you have to feed a slave. Yeah, it's already not worth it. So, and I'm feeding them. So if I'm feeding them, so uh, they owe me a shkoyach already because uh, of, of the work that I'm doing for them. So Malay said to his father, he says, when did Rav Nachman say this teaching? That's That's like his slave, Daru, the market they could be, that he used to, he would dance in the bars. There's a guy that wasn't so much performing, you know, doing so much productivity. But Kuli Avdi, Ma'avid Avdi, but all slaves, they do work. How could you say that they're not worth the amount of bread that they put in their belly that you're, t- you're saying that you get a shkayach for like seizing them and putting them to work but, and feeding them at the same time? Amalei says, you're right. I know Kurab Daniels, really. I hold a Kurab Daniel that we mentioned before. That the Amr of the Nil Barav Ketina Amr Rav. He says, "I take you by Abdul Shachavera, Iba Asb Melacha." That if someone seizes his his friend's slave and he does work with him, that's why we're bringing this story over here because he quotes that teaching. Potter, he's Potter, because Amr we see Nichel like the Leil Listen Abdi. It's Zen and the Zalachas, and even more than that, the guy is pleased. He wants the Ebed to be working, and therefore it's not a problem that I'm that I'm seizing their their slaves. A Malay, so his son said to him, said, Pa, no, it's not true. How many when do we say this? Only the one who grabs the slave and puts him to work is not collecting money from the owner of the slave. The Ma or the master, keeping the Masik Bazuzi, since these people that you're taking their servants, they you're collecting money from them. It looks like interest, like you're taking not just the money that they owe you, but also you're using the slaves as interest on the loan. He is collecting he money. He, yeah, he's owed money from those people. So he said, you guys are not paying me. I'm going to use your slaves. So it looks like interest. Going on that halacha, that was the premise for this teaching. If you live in your friend's courtyard without his awareness. Although we said in Tzorah al you don't have to pay him the wages. You use that guy's summer home and you slept here for the night. He wouldn't rent it out anyway, don't have to pay him, but help you. But if let's say he owes you a loan and then you live in this courtyard, you actually do have to pay him. You're actually worse off because if not, it would look like ribis, it would have a Mexi Karibis type of a problem. And um, so, therefore, Todd, that seems like you, that's what in your situation. His father said, How'd you be? You're right, I retract. I'm not going to do this anymore because of this problem about Mexican ribbis that it looks like a, a problem about uh, ribbis. Now, Tais is actually uh, has, a, has an interesting conversation just to mention it. He says that um, how is it possible that for a borrower to do any favor to a lender, even though he would do without a loan, even things that are not normal to take wages, it should be forbidden, similar to the chutz of the Lekaimala Agra, the sure things that he usually wouldn't do, for example, to lend him his horse, it should be us, or even if he's really his friend, because that even though he'd lend him, but um, he, he's not allowed to do for the, for, the, for the lender any type of benefits. Taisa says that only things that are uh, well publicized, like to live in his courtyard or to grab a slave, but to lend stuff or even his horse, uh, since anybody would lend him, would be, it would be permitted. He says also maybe you could say that wherever before the loan they were such good friends, they would anyways lend. Uh, if they needed to, then you lend, lot of lend, even afterwards. I mean, this gets into this whole conversation that we see in our Gemara, that um, if, if, if a guy owes you money, then it's like a Mexican Caribbean type of thing. Like, you can't just uh, have, have pleasure from him because it looks like, uh, like as if you're taking interest on that. It just gets into that conversation. So the Gemara continues on the related vein of, like, we're talking about Hatoik of Avdoi. So Edma, we learned Hatoik of Svinaster Shechaber. Another case. If someone seizes another person's boat, and, and he used the boat. So um, Amirav, this guy saw the boat by the lake over there and he just decided to use the guy's boat. So Ratza, if the owner of the boat wants, he could take the, um, the, 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 the rental of how much it would normally cost. Ratza, if he wants to, he could take the cost of the wear and tear. So let's say if a guy broke a, a panel or got ruined, and the, 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 the amount of what it got ruined was more than how much you would normally rent out the boat for, he could take the amount of that uh, deterioration. That's the opinion of Rav. Shmuel says, no, he could only, the only could only collect the cause of the wear and tear 
even if it's less than schar. So it seems like it's a machlekes. However, Amar Papa, our Papa says, Loi Pligi, they're not disagreeing. Why? How do you explain this? Ha, Rav was referring to David de la Agra, where that boat was ordinarily rented. This guy keeps at the Lakewood Lake, and he keeps it in, and, and it's usually rented out. So but we presume that when the guy he was using the boat, the intention was for the rental. So when the guy used the boat, he wasn't using it through the medium of being a goslin. So he would have to give uh, forcibly uh, the rental price if they're more than the value of the deterioration. Ha, Shmuel is talking about the Levi de la Agra, where the guy, it's his own private boat. He just happens to have a house on the lake. So it's not meant for rental. So then you only give the value of what the wear and tear is. We're not, not paying you for the $10 you would normally charge if it was $2 wear and tear for using the guy's boat, you have to pay more than that. Now, that's one approach. If you, say, if you want, you could say a different approach. No, both of them are talking about that the boat is usually rented, and that's why he has it over there by the lake. So how do we resolve this, these different opinions? Ha, Rav is talking about the Nagas Le'adai to the Agra. That this goslin, so to speak, when he used this guy's boat, the, the intention of his was to pay the rent. That's what he was using. He was like, yeah, the guy usually, he usually rents it out. I'll pay him already. So that's why if he wants to, the owner could take the rental price from him. Now, if the deterioration, the wear and tear was more than how much the rental is, then he could take the wear and tear. Why? When you rent something, even if the boat that you got more wear and tear, that's like, you know, you know, it's, it's tough luck on the, on the owner. No, because here he forcibly took it, so it's, it's still in the category of gazel. So the owner has the choice that he could choose either one, like Rav said, either the schara or the pichsa. But Baha, Shmuel was talking about the nachis la daita de gazla nusa, that when this person used the boat, his intention was to steal it. He didn't intend to go ahead and just rent it. Oh, so even if the rental price was more than the wear and tear, he only gives the wear and tear because the halach is When someone steals something, he gives it how much it was worth at the time. It doesn't have to give any benefit that he had after that point. So therefore, um, he, he doesn't have to give um, this. this uh, he's only going to pay the pichsa, uh, the, what he ruined it um, as the mazik, but for the for the rental, even though it's more than that, he doesn't have to because he was his intention was to be a goslin and not to be a rental. Now going back to the Allah of the Mishnah, which is this klal we said of this parak of Misham Kishasik Zela. So the the Mishnah had told us regarding uh, different cases of when the halach is going to be uh, Misham Kishasik Zela, because you will coin it with a shinui. And therefore, like we said, we can yon then then it's yours, and whatever happens afterwards is irrelevant. Versus when you say Rachel Khalifanacha, which is I wasn't kinda. And they're they're same they're they're same categories, but the cases are slightly different, which is going to be in this category of Hezek Nikar or he, or meaning of Shina Nikar or Shina Shaina Nikar regarding if if you were kind it and then it's Musham Khazagil will be not kind and you could just say, Hey, this is yours, take it back. So the Mishnah described Ghazlmat Baya Benistak. So if a person stole a coin and it cracked, or he said he stole fruits and it became rotten, or he stole wine and it became spoiled. So in all these cases, we said you pay Kshasak Zela. But we described also, if let's say the coin was only disqualified, or the trim became tame, or the chametz just passed over Pesach, or an animal Aver does was done with it. All these cases, you could say, that's what the Gemara is going to come to qualify, because obviously these are all Shina Shein and Nikr, and you weren't kind of with a shin. There was no status that was changed, and therefore you could just say, "Here, here's your thing back." But the machlek is regarding how to qualify. Amar of Huna, when we said the opening case of nizdak, which is a, a recognizable shinoi, and therefore you are misham kshas exela, it means nizdak mamish. It literally was cracked. Now, when we said nifsal, which we said is the case that it wasn't a recognizable shinoi, and therefore you could say harishal chalvanecha, means paslase malchus. I mean, the king commanded that. Can't use this currency anymore. Not in this country. Not in any other country. It's uh, it's 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 this the 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 currency is disqualified. Now, even so, 
this is not a rec- this is not a change discernible in the money itself. It looks like the same dollar bill it always looked like. So therefore, that would still be a, according to this man uh, unrecognizable shinui, and therefore you wouldn't be kaina. It wouldn't be kashas exela. It was still the owners, and you could just say harishal chalfanech. You give it back as it is. That's the opinion of Rav Huna. However, Rabbi Hudame says no. Paslosi malchus nami hainanis. It's a finer point. You have to pay attention that um, when the king disqualifies this coin, that's also the same thing as the coin cracking. Why? Because that since you can't really use this coin anymore, it's a full-fledged damage, and therefore it's like having stolen, cracking it. It's the same thing cracking or like the government not using it anymore is going to be b'sham kashas exela because it was totally ruined already. So So according to Yehuda, what's in the category of the Mishnah where it says it was only disqualified, which the Mishnah says that it's not a recognizable shinui, it's not a full-fledged damage that uh, to say that you were kind of with Shinoi, it's a Paslasa Medina Zoo. It's where the people of this country on their own, they disqualified it, but the But it could be used in another state where they don't want Trump on the ballot. Whatever, you're in the country and you have a state that says we're not using this anymore. But it could be used in another state. You could say, go use it over there. So that's the same thing where that's the case of Paslasa where if it's only disqualified in one part of the country, so it's not a discernible change, and therefore you could say Arishal Khabanach, because that's not a recognizable damage. That's the machlek is between Rabbi Huda and Rabhuna, what's considered in the category of Nistak and what's considered in the category of Nifsa. Now, on both opinions, Rav Chiz is going to ask. He says, I'm like Rav Huna, Rav Chiz says Rav Huna like this. Lididak, according to you, the Amrit Nifsal, again, you have to help cup just to translate the words. This he said that. What is nifsal? Which again, that was the case where we said it's not going to be a shinui. You, you weren't kind of it. And then you could say, it's yours, take it. I, I was never kind of with any shinui of, of, of Gizela. And you said that includes paslosi malchus, that even if the king disqualifies it throughout the whole country. So I have, I have a question for you. We had in our Mishnah from the first category of things, fruits that became rotten. It's wine that became spoiled. He says, this questioner of Chizda, that that's similar to the case of when the currency is invalid for the whole country. Why? Because it's recognizable, but it happens by itself, which is similar to the currency that you can't use anywhere in the whole country. And yet, and yes, and yet the halacha is that it is a shinoi. You do pick a shas exela. How is it different than the case of when the currency is ruined, but it happened by itself, that it's just because the king invalidated, he's understanding that that's the same thing. So, so then why over there, you're, you're calling, I mean, according to uh, Rabbi Yehuda, makes sense, because he considers paslasa kalamalchas as nisdak. It's like, yeah, it's totally ruined. It's, it's, you can't use it anymore. It's like, so therefore, that would make sense that it's similar to the case of the Ayin uh, Shehechmetz or Per Shekivu. But according to you, that you hold that, no, that's possible. That, that's the case of the second category of things, that it's not a Shinoi. He says, how is that different than Per Shekivu and Ayin Behechmetz? To which Amalei says, what do you mean? They're, they're different. Asma over there, by the case of the wine that's been spoiled or the pears that became rotten, on the time of Erecha. What do you mean? The taste, the smell, the body of the fruit of the wine became ruined. So therefore, that's going to be considered as a recognizable shinoi. The, the money, the coin looks the same thing as it always did. And therefore, it's not a recognizable shinoi. There be one kind of. I hear, I hear, I hear. It's still a hazard by the fact of, let's say, that it's not it's obviously worth less, probably because of the currency. It might have been paper currency, maybe. I don't, yeah, it's good. Cu- huh? Right. Or you can't really use it, right? I don't know if I had the. I don't know. If, I don't know if every bronze coin. I don't know if every coin had the value of the. They have different value of coins. I don't know if they had the exact inherent value. Had some value, maybe, but I'll upon them. Um, so that's his answer. 
Now, Amalei Rabba is the Giris of Rabbi Yehuda. Now, he asked to Rabbi Yehuda now based on his opinion. We just asked on, on Rav Huna's opinion. Now, we ask a similar question on Rabbi Yehuda. Lididach, according to you, the Amr that you say, Paslos and Malchus Nami, that when the government um, says, that's it, we can't use this currency anymore, we're going we're to disqualify, we're starting over a new currency. Hainu Nisdak, you hold, not like Rav Huna, you hold, that's like, like, like cracking the coin, which is, it's a full-fledged Shinoi. And you pick a Shas Exela, so it says, I have, a, I, have a, I have a question for you. Hare Truma Benitmas, which is from the second category of things. Let's say someone stole Truma and it became Tami. The Chipaslas and Malchas Tami, he's saying that that's the equivalent of the government. So he's really playing both sides of the fence. He's asking both of them like, like similar type of cases, and, and he's trying to say what's the difference. It's like when the government disqualifies it because nothing really changed in the Truma when it becomes Tami. That's essentially the same thing as the coins. It, 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 you, you can't use the truma because it's truma tamei, but nothing happened to it, and that's why the Mishnah says Arishal Chal Banacha. I wasn't kind with Kinyani Abshina because nothing happened to it. So how is that different than the case of Paslos Paslos And it Ukutani we say Arishal Chal Banacha. Paslos Malchus also nothing happened to the coins; it's just disqualified. So why were there kids Arishal Chal But according to you, you say that that's from the case of Nistak, where you are kind with with Kinyani Abshina. Amalei says no, it's not the same thing. He says, awesome over there by Truma, loy minkud The the damage is not recognizable when it becomes tummy because it doesn't look any different than any other wheat because it became tummy. Hacha minkud azeka. Here's not true. Here actually, it is recognizable the damage because this coin doesn't look any more to the new coins that are being used. And when he stole it from him, all the coins were the same to it. Now that the government decided to disqualify, we have these new, you know, shekel chadash, we have this like a new picture with all, it looks different. It is a recognizable damage. And therefore, uh, that's why it's different and therefore it's going to be considered as nista. So each one finds differences and nuances to say what's considered a, a minkara, a recognizable, which would be considered as a shinoi to be kind of wicked on the gazelle and therefore uh, uh, you pay kashas gazelle. And or if it's not recognizable and it's not a shino, and if you were not clean, and if you could just say, "Look, take your thing as it is." Now, related conversation. The Gemara says, "Itma." We learned, "Hamalves chaveri." If someone lends his friend, the way Rashi learns it, is some type of merchandise. Um, on a coin, meaning he set for him a certain amount of money aside, saying, "I'm lending you this merchandise." You know, it, this is let's say worth 10, 10, 10 zuz. Now, the coin that they had set to use for the loan to be repaid with later became disqualified. So what's the halacha? So Rav Amai says, it continues in the days, okay, it's a Lamad Ba'ya, it's a Ba'ya Shah. You know, fine. They, they, they stopped the Shkalim already. There's no Ma'akurot, whatever. So you give him that coin that, that's used at the time when he's paying because he accepted on them to give him a coin, and that's not a coin. Which Rashi points out, we're specifically talking about where he lent him merchandise. But if he actually lent him the coins, he would just pay back what he lent him. But 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 he lent him merchandise, and he said, "I'm gonna you know pay me back with money." You know that coin, that coin's not a coin anymore. So therefore, he would have to give him whatever's whatever's being used at that time. Shmuel, Shmuel, however, disagrees. He says, "No, you could tell him, Lechetzi go use this in Mation somewhere far away, because there they're still using that coin." And even though it's not used here anymore, he could tell him, go, go use it over there. And that's what we made up. Now, Amr of Nachman, Nachman qualifies his teaching. He says, says, what's logical is that the teaching of Shmuel is specifically the Islay Urchul The lender has reason to travel to Mation. But if he has no reason to travel over there, then he doesn't have to accept that coin, which you can use in Hudson plots, where he's not going to, he doesn't have to accept that. However, Isri Rav Lerav Nachman, that's what Rav Nachman said. Rav asked on Rav Nachman, he says, wait a second. There's a b'risa that says, Ein mechalin, you are not allowed to redeem the Meisr Sheni fruits, al hamois Sheen Miyaitis, on coins that cannot be used at all in Yerushalayim, because that wouldn't be considered as Kesab Tzura. The Torah says, Betzarta Kesab Yadecha, Malachta El HaMokim, that the Gemara Darshans, that what that teaches us is that the coins must be considered a kesem tzura. The tzaratas means currency, has to be a, a, a coin that can be used in Yerushalayim 
And these coins are not Kesef Tzur over there. Kate said, how so? So the Bryce explains, which it, it, it either means to say the coins of Ben Kuziva, who they thought was going to be uh, Mashiach. Uh, they, these were a Yerushalayimis coins, or some of the gears of Kuzvis Yerushalayimis, whatever, it's not used at all. Or it means from Kiziv, um, and the gear says Kuzvis or Yerushalayimis. But be that as it may, we took my coins that can't that are not used anymore. Oishal Malachim Yerushalayim, or from uh, earlier kings. Um, so Eimachalim, you can't use the the kinds of gear because it's it's not usable coins. Now the inference is Hoshal Acharoinim, but from later kings, meaning that are current kings that are used in other countries, but they're Dumi Yerushalayim, but they're similar to earlier kings in the fact that it cannot be used in the place of where the owner of the Meister Shani are, because they're invalid over here, sounds like Mechalalim, that you could use it to redeem, even though he has no reason to go over there in the place where it could, those coins could be used, because he needs to go to Yerushalayim. And he's not going to Meishan. So that's difficult in Rav Nachman, according to Shmud, that he says, but if he has no reason to go to Meishan, then not. Here it sounds like from the Brisa that even though you have no reason to go, as long as it could be used somewhere else, that it is valid. So it seems to contradict Rav Nachman. A Malay, so Rav Nachman responded, says, No, Hachma is Kinon. What are we talking about over here? And the Brysa is Kishain Malchius Makpida Zuazu. We're talking about where the, king, the kingdoms are not particular one on the other. And therefore, you have the ability to travel. And since you have the ability to travel, so then, yes, then it's going to be valid. Did that include them like the one where it's going wrong? No, no, we're talking about, like, let's say, uh, uh, there's. Yeah, yeah, any currency is good as long as it can be utilized somewhere else in the world. So that's what we're saying that that's going to be valid. We're just saying, and that's what the Gemara is going to ask right now, and that's what the deek is from the Brisa. So it says the Gemara, wait a second. So Eli Kiyama, are you telling me that when Rav Nachman said according to Shmuel, that when you don't have reason to travel to Mashon, then it's not going to be good. Is Kishamalchis Makbidiz also? Is when the kingdoms are, are, are particular one on the other and they don't let travel? Because that's what you're answering. You're saying, when did Bryson tell us this halacha that, you know, if it could be used somewhere in the world, even though you don't, you don't plan on traveling over there, is when the kingdoms are not particular, you, you technically could travel over there. So what do you tell me? And Shmuel, when he said that you have no reason to travel, um, I guess that we don't say that he has to take it because he's not going to go over there. I guess if you could find someone else to get it, I guess that's already another step. Find someone else that's going over there. Um, but we're saying the guy himself doesn't have to take it because he doesn't plan on going over there. But you tell me if he doesn't plan on going over there, then it has no value? But, but we said to Bryson that it does. So we answered, oh, but the guy doesn't plan on going over there, it depends. When the Malchus, and not Mike Peter Zuazu, maybe it's like you, because he could get, give it to someone else who wants to use it, then we consider it as if... Uh, it has value. So wait, when Shmuel said, the way Rav Nachman qualified him, that when he doesn't plan on going over there, that it's not going to have any value, why not? So are you telling me because Shmuel's talking about a case where the kingdoms are particular, that they don't let uh, people uh, traveling between? So then, if that's the case, then how could he ever get the money over there? But when the people of the country by customs are going to check and they're going to find those monies, it's going to be a loss for him because you're saying they're mock, but they're particular about the transfer of these funds. Says the Gemara, the Mamti Lo Al because he could get the money under, under, under duress, Dele Bachashi, because the customs are not so particular that they're going to check through all his baggage. And the Mashkechi Kapti, and if they find it, then they're particular. So therefore, that Rashi explains like this. That's what Rav Nachman is explaining for Shmuel. If a guy has business over there in Hudson Bloods that he has to go there, then he has to accept that coin and he'll use it over there when he does business. If not, since he can't show it over here out in the open to the people of Mason that come over here because they're Macbeth, so if he wants to, he doesn't have to accept it. But since al he could get over there, if he has business to do with it, then he has to accept it. That's how um, 
the uh, Gemara is answering why it's not difficult on Rav Nachman. The Gemara says, Tashma, the Gemara tries to bring another Raya in the following Braisa. Ein Mechalim, a person is not allowed to uh, redeem Meiser Sheni al Mois Shal Khan on money over here in Yerushalayim. Vehain, but the actual monies and the owner is Bebavel. So since you can't use it right away where he is, which it has to be, as the Gemara tells us later on on the next daf, that has to be Motzeb Yodach, has to be usable now, and you can't. So you can't use that type of currency to redeem the Meiser Shein. Neither can you use Bishal Bavel, if it's Babylonian money, Vehain Khan, but they're here in Yerushalayim. Because again, it's, it's usable only in Bavel, and now it's in Yerushalayim. Now, the Paris themselves, that doesn't make a difference to us because wherever they are, you could redeem them. And they're, even if they're out of your shalim. Now, shall bubble, they bubble. If it's Babylonian coins and they're in bubble, okay, then machal, and then you could use it to redeem the Meister Shem. That's the Bryce. But says the Gemara, Ketan Mias, one thing is that we learned in the Bryce like this. Ein machal, and amoy shalkan, behem bubble. He said, you cannot redeem the Meister Shem of your shalim money, but they're in bubble. The money is in bubble right now. Now, says the Gemara, I got this civil amazing law. Some, what do you mean? You're going to end up bringing that money to Yerushalayim because that's the whole point. The point of redeeming my Sashani is you don't want to schlep all your my Sashani up to Yerushalayim. You redeem it on the money and you bring the money to Yerushalayim. So you're going to mean the money. So obviously, you see that even though you quote unquote have Urchalamation, you have reason to go travel over there because you're going to, you're going to be, be, be coming to Yerushalayim. Because, uh, 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 and even so, we don't call that money that could be used. Well, that's not like the teaching of Shmuel that Rav Nachman qualified says that when you have orchalamation, that then it is considered as usable currency. Here we see it's not. Says the Gemara, no. Hachamai skin. What are we talking here? Keshemalches makpid zu al zu. We're talking about here. The governments are very particular, um, more than usual, where they check and they inspect and they go through every part of your. You're, you're like in the good old days when you go to Russia and they go through everything. So therefore, um, it would be dangerous to bring the, 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 the money um, through customs because they check. And therefore, even though you can end up coming, that's still not valid um, to be able to travel with those funds. So like Mark says, if that's the case, I'll bubble him, bubble my chazo. That, but then, then it, it, you told me one of the cases you said was if you have the Babylonian money and you're in bubble, oh, then that works. What does that help? But you're not going to be able to get the monies through customs to Yerushalayim. Says the no, Chazu, it is fit because the Zavim Bu Be'imo, Masik Yerushalayim. You could buy an animal in bubble with the Babylonian money and you could bring the, the animal you could bring through customs and you could bring him through to Yerushalayim. And therefore, that's why it's going to be fit. But once we brought the Brysa, the Gemara asks on the Brysa. But Tan, you learned in a different b'risa, Hiskinu, they instituted Shiyu, the Bach adds on the word, call that all hamois, Yetzis Yerushalayim, that all types of currency should be usable in Yerushalayim, Mepnei Kach, because of this. I mean, like Tesis in Damascus, Shiyu explains, because the Shkolem that they would bring to Yerushalayim would be from all places in the world. So because of that, they instituted that all currency should be val- valid. So why did the previous b'risa say that um, that if you have the Babylonian currency over here in Yerushalayim, that's not valid. I thought they instituted that all currencies should be valid. So Rabbi Zayi says, like Kash, it's not a difficulty. Why? Because Khan, the second price is that you said you could use old currency. When the Jewish people, their power is uh, stronger than the nations of the world. And then, yes, then we can have all the currencies here. Khan, the first price of when the nations are in control and they don't let the Jewish people do whatever they want to do, then they can't get, like we said, the currencies through customs, and therefore, then you would be limited to whatever is usable over here in Yerushalayim. Now, parenthetical, once we're talking about the Yerushalayim currency, what was the coin used in Yerushalayim? So you have David Ushleime was written, says Rashi, um, not, not actual picture of David Ushleime, it's their, their names were written on one side. And Yerushalayim Yerakaydish was written on um, Mitzad Achar on the other side. 
What was the coin of Avram Avinu? So Zakin is a king of Echad. You had Avram and Sarah, the old man and the old woman, on one side. And you had the young man, the young woman, Yitzchak and Rivka, on the other side. Which Tais, so Taisus brings on the bottom Taisus from the Medrash Rabbah that when it says, we know the bracha in Parashalech, Hashem gave it to him, means his, 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 his fame is going to come out there and they make a stamp about you, right? And everyone starts to see you. So he says, what's Menitin? It means the coin that the Zaka and the Zakena was on one side, the Bacha and the Bachur was on the other side. So it says, it would seem not that the, the picture, because you're not allowed to make a tzura of an Adam. Sigmar tells us, not allowed to make a picture of a person. It was written on one side, Zakan with Zakena. The other side was written, Bachar and Besula. And that's how Rashi says explicitly, by Dabin and Shlem and Yerushalayim Rekadish, it was written. It's not like we had pictures of these things. It was just written. Uh, these these words, I, I have yet to find it, but um, it would be nice, interesting to see. Now the Gemara asks, related, What happens if someone lends his friend money on a coin? So he says, look, I'll lend you this bat. He, on the condition you give me back for the loan, uh, the value, which is a dollar. But then they added value to the dollar. Ma, what's the halacha? So Rashi explains the question is specifically according to Rav, that he says that you give back the matpeya of that time, even though, let's say, the original coin is not valid anymore, not like Shmuel. So when they added on to the coin, what would Rav say? So Amalei said to him, yeah, that um, you give back the coin as it's worth at that time when you're paying back even though the, the value of the currency went up in value. Somebody says, I like inafia, even if it's as big as a sieve, which is a terminology like a sifter, like it's very big. I mean, that's how big it got. I'm like, and he says, yes. I'm like, I feel like ki, ki meaning which is a large cella, like a, like, a, like a measurement that holds a, a quarter of a cup. He says, I'm like, and yes, yes. He says, but, but, well, he says, but the value of fruits went down in regards to the coin. Comes out that you're gaining by this addition. And it's not similar to the earlier coin that you made up, and that should be ribbis, that should be a problem about interest. So Mavashi says, you're right, Chazina, we see. If that the, the, the fruits, the value of, of produce went down because of the coin, so you're right, then we, then we actually do knock down from the value we're giving back, because or else that would be a problem about ribbis. But we continue to have a But if let's say it's because of the market price that because there was so much rain, so coming out there's so much grain, so then the fruits went down in value. So it has nothing to do with the, the, the currency. So let me kindle. Then we don't. Then we don't. We don't diminish the value of the of the coin that we're giving it back. It says the Gemara, "Ibo koshavach l'inyanaska," but and this was asked previously. If you're going to come to melt down the coin, and you make um, just like nuggets, you can have more than the earlier coins. That itself should be ribbis, because the coin itself has more value inherent. So the Gemara says, you're right. Ela kihad the Rav Papa the Rav Hunda the Yeshua. Av the Uvda, they actually they did they actually did such a thing in practice. There was someone who lent his friend on a coin, and then they, the value was added to that coin. So they went bezuzi de ag de agdemis tayoya. There was an Arab merchant who had coins, he had the original coins and from the second coins, and they, f- and they found ad yud bitmanya, that there was eight of the second coin that had ten from the first coin, and they gave him eight, which Taisa explains Rashi that he's counting from top down. In other words, 12, 11, um, with eight up until ten, you're going to give him eight. But if let's say there was nine from the first ones, in the eight of the second one, you would give nine from the second one in place of the nine of the first one, or even ten for ten. But beyond that, you're right; you wouldn't give him that much of a value. So it's like, it sounds like there's a slight margin that they would allow that to go, and that wouldn't be a problem. But more than that, than that, we would consider that as a problem about uh, that. It looks like ribbons. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you.